Good morning. Hello, I'm Rebecca Layton, and I'm delighted to partner with the Graduate School at UTSA for the Career Builder Session. I'm a career coach and director of professional development programs at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where I help our trainees transition into careers that excite them. And today, I'm going to help you do the same. Today, we'll focus on personal branding. As a certified mentor coach and professional certified coach trained in the psychology of goal setting, I research career outcomes and professional development for graduate trainees. You can read more of my advice in my Carpe Careers column, where I'm a regular contributor, or follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out and connect, but be sure to include a note that you are participating in the personal branding workshop when you reach out. I look forward to connecting and seeing your fantastic brands come to life through introspection, inspiration, and reimagining you. Thanks for joining us today. We'll get started. First, I'd like to mention what we'll be talking about today, which is personal branding. How do you find a personal brand that helps you launch into the career an area that you want to succeed at? Maybe you don't even know what career area you want to succeed at. Maybe you're transitioning from a new career. I want to acknowledge that this is a difficult time for everyone, and many people are struggling with job loss, safety and security needs, and things that aren't usually necessarily the top of their mind. I want to also acknowledge that these are some things that people struggle with regularly. And so no matter where you fall on that spectrum, please take the time to take care of you, your family, and any needs that you need to in order to be able to launch into more introspective career success thereafter. Once you have these resources at your disposal, please utilize them to make sure that you are able to continue your career exploration and career launch in a way that is safe and uh, effective for you and your family. So with that, I wanna take a moment to talk about where we'll be heading today. The three key points that I would like you to be able to leave this with are thinking first about introspection. What do you bring to the table? Whether that's skills, experiences, interests. Second, I'd like you to think about inspiration. Where do you wanna go with your career? While this may or may not be a voluntary pause in your career or your life, or maybe you're just starting, maybe you're starting a new career as a retiree coming to the job market and, who, and without having to do that for many, many years. No matter what career stage you're at, taking some time for introspection and some time for inspiration can help you to get to the third stage, which is imagining or reimagining who and what is your personal brand. So with those steps in mind, I'd like to also remind us that at the moment, you may be employed, you may be underemployed, you may be unemployed. All of those are places that you can start from. So don't feel that you need to be at a certain life stage or current role in order to be able to move forward. That said, your strategies may differ depending on where you are in your particular career pathway and your personal circumstances right now. I'd like to talk about a couple of strategies that you may want to consider in order to think about where you'd like to go in the future. If you might want to take this time to do some retraining, look into seeing if you can get benefits or support that could support you and or your family's needs while you're moving through this time of challenge. This could include going back for a certification, a degree, online training while working, any of the above. So retraining is one possible option. Second is a mini trial. So in life design, this is called prototyping. How could you build some piece of what you think you might wanna do into something that you're already doing or that you could do, whether that's volunteer, part-time, or in a current role you may have. Third, third, you may choose a test run. Do you already know kind of what direction you wanna be heading? Do you already have some experience? Have you already tested that out a bit? Well, maybe it's time to either pick up a new role, add to a current role, or try out some completely new career path. And this will allow you to have the experience to then decide if that's something you want to continue to, um, to develop and explore in that career path. Fourth, is this a time to do a career start, restart, or pivot? Perhaps this is your first career step into the world after graduating, whether that's high school, whether that's college, perhaps with a higher degree, um, perhaps you have a certificate that you've completed. If you have some landmark moment that you are now moving forward from, you can use that to then pivot into that new career track. Perhaps you had an unexpected career switch. You were in a particular career path and then perhaps that job was discontinued um, or for whatever reason, you now have to make a decision to go in a different direction or to keep going in the direction that you want, that you were going in. 
So this would allow you to actually take a pause and think about which direction you want to go next. If you already have an idea for that direction, then go ahead and look for jobs in that field that you might be able to pivot into and you can begin that journey. If you maybe are post-retirement, is there something that you might want to do as a second career or a later career that might look different than whatever you did before? Again, there are many different life stages people may be at, and all of these are great places to start from. As you're thinking about this, the final product that we'd like you to leave today from this badging session is that you actually have an idea about what is your personal brand? How could you develop that towards whatever aspirational career goals you may have? And then how can you re-envision that brand to create a brand that's consistent and authentic with who you want to present towards the world? The first activity that we'll have today is for you to do some introspection. For the introspection step, I'd like you to do an activity. You can jot this down on a piece of paper. You might throw it into a spreadsheet if you're on a computer or a Word document. Um, anything that you have handy would be just fine. For this activity, we're gonna take two minutes. I wanna brainstorm a list of any experiences or skills that you think you bring to the table. So go ahead and pause your video and we'll have a two minute break for you to brainstorm everything you can think of that might be of interest to an employer. And then we'll be back. Did you feel stuck? Did you feel inspired? Did you have a long list, a short list? No matter what you found, this activity can help you figure out what you already have and where you might wanna head in the future. If you weren't quite sure where to start, there are some great online tools. The VIA Strengths Inventory can help determine what strengths you innately possess that you really enjoy using, things you're really good at naturally, which you can then highlight to potential employers. You might also choose to find some skills, values, or interest inventories, which are available for free online. Those can give you a sense of what direction you could head with the skills you have, what direction those interests might point you as far as what career might be a good fit, and or what values that are important to you in finding a job, a career, or a company that is really authentically a good fit with what you want in your life. So again, if that was a, a sticking point at all, take a few moments and try to search out one of these inventories, take a pause and complete one of those, and then come back to that list and revisit what those skills that you might have are, skills, experience, experiences, um, and strengths that you might be able to bring the to the table for an employer. So we'll take another pause again here to let you explore any of those online inventories and then revisit that list. So now that you've taken some time to think about the skills and experiences you bring to the table, it's time to find some inspiration. We've talked about some strategies you might consider in pivoting your career, finding a new career, restarting, or finding some exploration to figure out what you may wanna do next. As you're thinking about inspiration, there's a lot of ways to get excited about what your next steps might be. One thing that you might consider is to looking up job ads that already exist. Whether you tend to imply that particular job or not, those job ads can help give you a sense of what employers are looking for in that field, for that position, and in general, if you have those skills and if you might be a good match. Or if you're not a good match yet, what would you need to do to be a good match? They can also give you some inspiration if you're stuck on some of those keywords we were talking about earlier. Thinking about what is common in the career fields of interest can help you decide on what skills, values, and interests you may want to highlight while you recount experiences you've had that could be valuable for that particular career field. So taking a moment, the next activity that we're going to do is to look up three keywords for job ads. Any three that I'd like you to try to find three different ads using those three keywords and see if you can find, it could be three of the same position, three different positions. They might be similar or completely but polar opposite, that's okay. But figure out if you can look at at least three jobs of interest that you can locate. Pause your video now for 10 minutes and try to locate those three jobs. And we'll be back soon. Now that you have three jobs, dream jobs, exciting jobs, jobs that sound vaguely interesting, take a moment to look through them in great detail and make a list of what keywords pop out for each of the three jobs. Then go back and highlight especially transferable skills. What skills are showing up across a variety of different options 
And in what ways are those actually helping you to figure out how you might wanna highlight those skills? So again, take about 10 minutes here, read each job description, make a list of skills, and then look for common keywords that you're seeing across all of those jobs. Take about 10 minutes and we'll see you back soon. Next, find some LinkedIn profiles that match any of or all of the keywords and titles that you found from your initial search looking for job ads of interest. Find at least three people per career track. Take note of what their career trajectory was. What positions did they hold? What order? How long? What skills do you think they might have? Again, just take a moment to browse through them. You don't need to record them all, but take notes about what you find as commonalities between each of these. Take about 10 minutes, find three profiles per job, so nine total, and look for what their career pathways looked like. We'll be back soon. All right, now for step three in the inspiration momentum. How do we put it all together? So think about your aspirational job experience that you'd like to be going for. How can you highlight those skills that you have from step one, introspection, to step two, finding inspiration, and looking through all of those things that you just went through, the LinkedIn ads, the keywords that you found, and the, and the job pathways and traje trajectories and experiences they highlighted. How do, what did you find in the job ads? How can you highlight skills that match those as well? And take a moment to try to do a quick matchup. Create a brand new piece of paper where you just write down your skills that are applicable after going through your inspiration exercises. Take about two minutes to just get down on paper. What are some keywords that really resonated with you that are directly ap applicable to career paths of interest that you just looked up? See you back in two minutes. So the next step is re-envisioning you. What does that look like? So we brainstormed some of your skills, your experiences through introspection, we looked at some areas you may want to head to highlight for your future career steps look through looking at job ads and other career paths that people have had before you. Now it's time to reimagine you. What keywords could you build into making an effective personal brand? This could be three keywords. It could be three sets of two keywords each. Perhaps it's a one sentence descriptor that works everything together of your experiences that you want to highlight. There's no right formula and many ways to do it effectively. The key is to keep it short, concise, and authentic, and make sure it's on point for whatever direction you may head next. If you picked diverse career pathways, you may need to make it a little bit broader and more general. If you picked a particular career pathway, you may highlight very specific things for that career. It's all up to you. Again, there's no right or wrong answer here, but be authentic and be sure that it serves you in moving forward aspirationally into that next career pathway that you'd like to do. So the next step is that we are going to actually create a personal LinkedIn profile. If you don't have one yet, now is the time to set one up. I'll pause the video. It should take just a couple of minutes. It's free and all you need to do is put in all of your basic information. We'll come back and talk about how to upgrade it and make it look very spiffy after this. But for right now, just go ahead and create that profile if you don't have it. I'll pause the video and we'll see you back shortly. All right, congratulations, you have a LinkedIn profile. While this is not the only profile out there, it's an important way to create your personal brand. Think of it like your online business card. And yes, you can create a business card too, but we'll talk about that later. Twitter is also a common professional platform where people connect and engage. Although if you have to pick just one, LinkedIn is probably the best place to start. LinkedIn also gives you opportunities to network, connect with other people and find out who you know who might know other people so that you can build your network both in person organically when we can do that again, hopefully soon. Um, and also just virtually, you can reach out to people for what are called informational interviews. You can connect with them and ask to just be connected and then follow up with them later. Informational interviews allow you to make a little bit deeper connection than simply an online connection by setting up a time for a phone call or a video chat based on your preferences and needs to meet that person, ask them about their career, ask them what, what made them successful. Ask about people breaking into that career pathway. What do they look for when they're looking for new hires? What do they think makes someone a successful candidate once they're in the job? What skills are important? What experiences? All of those sorts of things. What job title should you be looking for? 
Maybe you know what you wanna do, but you don't know what it's called. Ask someone in the field, they can give you guidance and direction. Once you've done a little bit of networking and connecting, informational interviews, meeting people, your network will begin to organically grow. At that point, your network and your profile can actually be used to help promote your personal brand, meet people, and look for possible future jobs. You can also apply to jobs directly on LinkedIn, although I recommend not doing an automatic application. Always customize, always tailor. It will make you stand out. If you don't, it is likely that you'll get overlooked, even if you're a great candidate. So be sure to tailor your application every time. You can also have it start the, the uh, application through LinkedIn, pause it and go back to customize it later. It's up to you. So as part of your final exercise, I'd like to walk you through steps to creating and making your LinkedIn profile a success. First, be sure that your information is up to date. Whatever your last role was or your current role is, is accurate. Be sure your education tab is filled in to whatever extent you have completed to date. Include any certifications, college credits, um, anything at all that you think might be relevant in your career pathway. Third, if you have any additional things you'd like to add, leadership perhaps in a church group or maybe leading a sports team, anything that shows your versatility as a person, you can put that in volunteer organizations. If you belong to any professional organizations that are relevant, you can list those as well. If you've done any writing, whether that's blogging or have any publications or journal articles or anything that you'd like to share, you can also share that on your LinkedIn profile. If you've ever created a website or you have a, your own business or you're thinking of starting your own business, that can be shared as well. So again, it's very versatile, but be sure to go through each step to make sure that you've filled it out completely. It's also recommended that if you don't have a photograph, you take some sort of professional photograph. It doesn't have to be by a professional photographer, but please think about how you could make it look clean cut and crisp. You can use a phone or any sort of camera that you have around. Um, try to stand up against a blank wall or some sort of background that isn't distracting. Alternatively, if you want to have it kind of blend into the background, you could stand outside and have some sort of greenery in the background but just make sure that whatever's in the background is understated and emphasizes you so that your face is the uh, major por portion. Be sure that you wear a professional attire that's, again, in accordance with whatever field that you wanna go into. If a polo is usually what's worn in that field, wear a polo. If you're going into restauranting, make sure you're wearing what you might wear for an interview or what you'd wear on the job for that. Um, like similarly, if you're going towards a professional interview, be sure to have a blouse, a button up, a suit jacket, whatever is appropriate for that field. Um, and again, there's no right or wrong answer here. If you're a performer or a dancer, you should be wearing stylish clothes that you might perform or dance in, right? Um, so whatever your career field is, just think about, or your aspirational career field is, just think about what would look fitting for that field. And um, you can try to make that showcase your skills as well. As you dive into your final project, building your new or updated LinkedIn profile with your reimagined personal brand. I'll take you through some screenshots to show you how to execute various tips and tricks to execute a flawless on-point profile that showcases the authentic you reimagined to highlight your fit to your next career move. At minimum, be sure to your current pages up to date includes your current or most re recent position and educational experience. Include some or ideally all of your relevant work positions, any educational credentials or degrees, and a professional looking photo or headshot. While you do not need to implement every tip or trick, please pick at least five additional tips that you'd like to try out and implement on your own profile. The next section will be a screenshot of demos and how to implement these tips. Again, choose any five. The first five will be basic tips. The remaining tips will be more advanced. You may choose to implement just the basic tips or a combination of basic and advanced. And feel free to implement more than five but in order to have credit for the assignment, at least five must be implemented. I look forward to seeing your personal brand come to life. Tip one, personal brand creative headline. Be sure to choose something that fits both, both aspirationally to your new career goals, as well as accurately rep represents the goals you have now. Here you can see I've chosen career coach, higher education administrator, and program evaluator, plus synergizer to represent the skills I most value and that I want people to notice about myself. You'll see that my job description, if I scroll down, is what would automatically show up, Director of Professional Development Programs. While there's nothing wrong with having the default headline as your title, this allows you to boost your visibility 
in the search algorithms for LinkedIn to show up for recruiters and people who may be searching your profile, potential employers. So think carefully about what you'd like to put here. <clears throat> Tip two, you can easily develop a customized web link. If you're looking at your profile, in the top right corner, you'll see an opportunity to edit or customize your personal URL for your profile. Simply clicking the little pencil button will allow you to edit it, where you can put in anything you would like. By default, your name or some variation thereof, maybe including your middle initial if your full name is taken already, or adding some credentials or degrees on either end of your name could help you if you're unable to get your name as the default. Once you've saved that, you'll now have a professional link that you can share in your resume and business cards or other places you may want to that will make it look really crisp and clean. Tip three, add a professional summary. This could be a memorable one-liner, a three summary skill bullet. You could try out the STAR method, which is situation, task, action, result, to think about how you can conceptualize your accomplishments using that STAR bullet. This is just a method to try to remember all of the points. Again, that situation, task, action, results. I favor starting with the action word in a bullet, such as communicated scientific findings via three peer-reviewed publications, two blogs, and one conference presentation, or something similar to that effect. Remembering to do the result is extremely important. Hence, for a STAR method similar to what I just mentioned, you might mention that you executed tasks that allowed you some result. For instance, manage five projects resulting in peer-reviewed publication, or supervised 10 employees, resulting in flawless execution of duties and 100% safety for one year. These are just some examples. And again, you may use the star bullet as an outline to help you think about what information you may want to include. Tip five, add one or more optional sections like volunteer, organizations, awards, or publications, whatever is most applicable to your future. Demonstrating on screen, you can see that you can add lots of sections. As you can see, a small pencil shows up next to each section. So for instance, to edit your headline for tip one, you would simply click here. <clears throat> Oops, we had an error, so let's try that again. You would simply click here on the pencil, there we go. Um, and you'll see you can edit any information you'd like. If you would like any of your credentials to show up with your name in your um, public profile, you can also include them with your last name and it will simply show up there. Here's the headline we talked about for tip one. Here is your current position. Again, you can default keep this as your current position or if you have a really relevant volunteer position that you want to show up, you may promote that. For example, regional director of the Southeast Region Graduate Career Consortium is something that I do in my field, which is separate from my role as professional development programs. So this allows me to highlight both when someone's looking at my profile. You can include any education, where you're from, and also any emails, websites, profile, Twitter, or other social media that you'd like to link. Again, be sure these are professional. Don't link any personal social media platforms here. When you're done editing, go ahead and click that save button. <clears throat> Similarly, going back to tip five, if you're adding an optional section, there are many places you can do that. Here you can see the about where you'll put your personal summary from tip three. <clears throat> Here's where you can add your voluntary sections. <clears throat> At minimum, your experience should be added for sure, which is all of your professional experiences to date. Here you can see some of those that I have and my education. If you have more than will fit, you can choose to add those as well. Any licenses and certifications you have, volunteer experience, skills and endorsements. This is where other people can endorse you for a skill. Recommendations and accomplishments. Again, these are all voluntary. We'll get more into these in the advanced section next with some of the advanced tips. But if you have any of these, go ahead and add them. If you don't, no problem at all. 
it's really just a way to highlight any extra experiences or skills that you have that an employer might not otherwise notice. You can see that there's a section for organizations, fluency in any other languages, <clears throat> and any publications you have. This could include anything from blogs to peer-reviewed publications to journal articles, contracted or otherwise. So think about what you may want to put here. And finally, there's an interest section where you can actually follow others and see what they're doing, sort of like a social media feed, but it also, again, will help you be promoted in the LinkedIn algorithm for companies, organizations, uh, and different groups that, are in, that align with your interests. Okay, now on to advanced tips. So those first five at minimum, you can go ahead and complete any of those that apply for you. For tip six, again, this is the advanced section. Feel free to implement any of these that are relevant for you. If you have media website or blog, create or embed a LinkedIn article. So you can see here where we looked before, you can add those in right down here, and that'll actually show up in your profile. Another place you can add embedded articles is right here in the featured section. In order to do that, you can write an article and then embed it here on any topic that you feel that you're an expert in. If you are especially skilled at a particular task or craft, you could have a photo of some of your work or a video. Um, if you are an artist, you could have an example of your art, artistic media. And again, you can put those either here by linking them in, your, in the top part of your profile, or do a written section here where you can have a featured article. Your activity will be displayed, so you can also think about where you may want to display activities that you're doing, such as following others, liking, sharing, and adding comments. Tip six. Tip seven, rather. Customize your banner. This is really a bells and whistles fun thing that you can do to give your brand a little pop and pizzazz. This picture in the back that you see is your banner. Canva.org is a great free editing software that has stock photos and you can add words similar to you see what I've done on my profile. If you have any artistic media, as I mentioned previously, this is a great way to showcase that. If you have photos of you in action doing your job or doing the job that you want to be doing or showcasing a skill, this is a great way to include that. Again, it could be also something just part of your personal brand, like a picture of where you're from, the city skyline, <clears throat> uh, or some other landscape or, um, or picture of people connecting, if you wanna show that you're a connector. It really could be any sort of photo in the background, but you do wanna make sure it's sized correctly. Um, and so again, you can use that canva.org to explore that if you're interested in developing that further. Tip eight, again, this is another advanced tip, but build your network. Find people you know and send 10 personalized connection invitations. So if you feel like you've already moved on, you have your profile at a place that you're really happy with, go ahead and start that networking process. That will enhance your ability to reach out to others, help you find contacts and connections for informational interviews, and again, participate in some of these other badging sessions to figure out how you might maximize that network. But in the meantime, for tip eight, you've got to at least have sent 10 personalized invitations in order for that to count if you do want to implement that for the purposes of this activity. Tip nine, this is also related to build your network. If you have attended any, edu any edu educational institution, whether you have a degree or not, you can use the alumni tool to search and find people that you want to know and send 10 personalized connection invitations in order to count for this assignment. I'll demo that on screen now. So when you want to connect with people, either for tip eight, build your network to do personalized connections, or tip nine, build your network, finding alumni connections. You can do that through network and looking at connections that you already have. So for instance, if you'd like to search people, you can start typing in the name of someone that you know. One of our other presenters here who's worked on this session and set it up, Dr. Tracy Boss at UTSA. Oh, look, there she is, we're already connected. If we weren't, I could search and click here to go ahead and invite her. Let's say I wanted to find someone new to connect with. I could click search and people, 
And let's say that I wanted to connect with someone, LinkedIn will provide some connection um, suggestions based on other people that I'm already connected with, or I could search. Let's say I wanna find managers today. Where are some managers that I could connect with? So scrolling down, you'll see that there are a number of people that I could connect with. Let's say I wanted to connect with this person. I would click connect. I always, always recommend adding notes. If you do not have a note, then you are, have the possibility that someone won't remember where you met each other, or if you don't know each other at all, it's possible that they may choose not to connect. So put a personalized note such as, hey, it was great to meet you at the conference, or it was great working with you, or hey, remember my, being my next door neighbor, uh, whatever the case may be. Do include personalized information. This would be less than I would normally recommend. Some sentence or two about how you know each other um, with details is usually the best, but this is an example of how you do that. And then you would simply click send invitation. Okay, let's say that I want to find somewhere that I've attended and I wanna connect with alumni from that institution. You can search or you can click on the icon from your profile. Whenever you get to that setting, you then want to scroll down so you see the alumni tab in the bottom right hand, the left hand corner. Once you click on that, this amazing alumni search tool is accessible for you and this is free and available to everyone to use. Here, you can search by any possible category. So I now have access to 169,000 alumni from my undergraduate institution. And you may have some from yours as well. This includes community colleges, certifying programs, as well as for four year and higher advanced degrees. So don't hesitate to check and see if you might have some connections in your area. You don't have to have attended there, but it does impact how many people will reach out to you. If you pick a place that you have at one point attended, people are more likely to connect. So again, feel free to cold call if there's an institution in your area that has a training program and those people say specialize in a topic in your area that you want to connect, feel free to use those as well. But again, I do recommend ideally using any institution that you have some affiliation with. So let's say I wanted to find people who lived in Philadelphia. Let's say um, I didn't know, I wasn't for sure on where they all work, so I'll skip that one. But let's say I'd like to specify some other things. Um, let's say I wanna find people in business development. So I wanna learn more about that. Um, again, I don't really wanna specify where they work because I kinda wanna be broad. But let's say I wanna know people who studied psychology because that's what I studied. So let's see who, who studied psychology and is in business development in Philadelphia. Oh, 500 people, that's a lot less daunting than 170,000, right? Um, and then you can include any additional criteria that you want, it will narrow it down. Um, so I usually recommend using those first four, but if you wanna add any of these, like say I want leadership, someone who knows about leadership um, and has skills in leadership, and let's add in public speaking. This is gonna narrow the list down further. So now I can find 271 people that say, and have endorsements for public speaking and leadership, studied psychology, are working currently in business development and live in Philadelphia. And again, you can do this for institutions or locations near you in Texas to see what you'd like to find and specify. Now, if I scroll down, it will show me all of my connections who meet these criteria that I can actually reach out to. And so if I did want to connect, I would just click, let's say, we'll just pick someone. Um, I have five shared connections or 23 shared connections. So I don't actually know this person, but it looks like they'd be a really good connection for me because I do have some shared connections. So then I could simply type in similarly that personalized message. Um, again, we would do the very personalized version that I showed you before that says, hey, I met you here. If it's someone you don't know though, you're gonna need to do a customized message. Hi, I see we have lots of connections in common. I'd love to learn more about what you do. Would you like to connect? And if there's some mascot, maybe go Quakers, which is the uh, mascot for the University of Pennsylvania, right? And so then 
you can go ahead and show that you're an alumni. You can maybe add a little bit about you graduated when and what field you studied. I see you studied similar fields, et cetera, et cetera. So again, you do want to go through that full customization. This is just a sample, but then you would go ahead and click send when you're ready. So we're not going to do that today, but that should give you an idea of how to do it. This is a really powerful tool, and I really, again, highly recommend using that alumni search tool. <clears throat> All right, on to the next advanced tip, tip nine. This is another way to uh, build your network. So building your network by choosing companies you're interested in is another way to look for possible places you may want to go. So let's say I want to know more about some particular kind of company, so Boeing. So let's say uh, aviation and aerospace. Um, then I would actually find five companies for the purposes of this assignment, you can do as many as you want, but for this assignment, find five companies if you'd like to do this advanced tip that you're interested in and send personalized connection invitations to people with job titles that sound interesting. Remember, you can also follow those companies in the bottom of your profile under follow. But let's go ahead and just click Boeing here. And let's see what they have to tell us. So there's lots of information about the company, as well as employees. You can see what they're up to, what are they posting right now on their LinkedIn, um, what projects are active. Now, four people from my company, UNC, were hired here. Oh, maybe that's a good place to start. So perhaps these would be my first four connections. So someplace you've worked before or you currently are, do you have anyone in common? That's kind of an easy way to find people. But say you don't have that pop up. Go ahead to all of their profile. And again, you can search or just scroll through. Now this is lots, 128,000 is a lot to scroll through. But if it's a smaller company, you can actually scroll through all the employees and look who might be the best fit to pick someone work, to work it, um, to connect with. Um, again, just choose one person per company for right now so you don't overwhelm them. But of course, if it's a large company, there's no problem with doing more than one. If it is a small company, you do want to avoid like reaching out to every single person, ideally. So here you could find, again, many different types of companies. Let's say we are searching for aviation and aerospace. Using the Boeing example. And instead of people, we now want companies. And we can say, huh, that looks like an interesting one. Let's see. Okay, let's see, do they have, how many employees do they have? So they have some followers. They must be a smaller company. It doesn't look like they're listing their employees. So let's try another one. Um, we'll try this one. All right, so they have only 17 LinkedIn employees. So this one you could probably easily scroll through and see who you might want to connect with and then reach out. Again, you can click connect or you can message. The more connections you have, the more likely you'll be able to connect. But if you aren't able to do so, um, you can choose to buy LinkedIn premium in order to message. If you see the lock symbol, that means you need to get premium. I don't generally recommend doing that, but if you are actively on the job hunt, it may be worth doing for a month or two if you're really trying to do a big push to get connections. So it is something to consider. Usually the free options are more than, um, more than uh, possible to make all the connections you want. And again, those alumni networking tools allow you to connect without having to use the paid option. So that is a nice free way to do it. <clears throat> All right, so those are our three build your network tips in the advanced section. Back to your profile, here's another advanced tip. You can actually get someone to write a recommendation for you and write someone else a recommendation. These can be simply a short paragraph describing how or what you've done together and why they were effective at what they did. <clears throat> in order to receive credit for completing this tip, be sure to ask for one recommendation and write one and give your recommender a few days to complete this. You can see here a brief paragraph about a colleague that I taught with, and you can see that I've given some recommendations, and you can see some of the comments that I've made for those if you need an example. Again, these are bells and whistles. These advanced steps are things that you can do really if you wanna shine it up. 
And our last bells and whistles one is skills and endorsements. I mentioned this earlier. Now you have to be endorsed by other people. So you can't really make this one happen, but what you can do is endorse some other people or ask colleagues of yours that you work with to endorse you for things that they think you're good at. Obviously they should be sure this is accurate. They should only endorse you for things that they personally feel that you are excelling at. If however, you want to customize it a bit, you can help the algorithm know what you want to promote people to notice in you by moving moving them to the top three. Only the top three show up by default. So you just drag and drop like this. In order to make space, you would have to swap one out. So you can see that <clears throat> I would have to trash this one, but I could then drag, drag and drop up data analysis if say that's something that I wanted to promote. If you're happy with these top three, you don't need to do anything, you can leave it as is, but just reach out to some colleagues that you've worked with to talk about if there's any skills that they would be interested in endorsing you on. You can do this through a LinkedIn request or someone you're already connected with, you can reach out and send them a message asking if they'd be willing to endorse you for whatever skills they think that you um, are good at. All right, so those are, um, yes, we wanna describe the changes. So those are some tips for how you can shine up your profile to make it a level above. Again, please continue on to hear more about instructions and assignments in order to earn your badge. And think back any of these tips you may choose. Tips one through five are basic tips. If you just choose those, you will have completed your badge. And if you wanna play around with any of the advanced tips, feel free. There are lots of great other ways to customize your profile, but this will give you a really nice menu to get started and creating a profile that will represent you to your future employer. So are you ready to earn your badge? There are four assignments that you'll need to complete in order to earn your badge. First, be sure that you understand how to upload onto Dropbox. Use the file folder at the UTSA badging website to upload your files. Create your files to prepare for upload by saving them as last name, first name for each title, along with the topic of that PDF or file. First and most importantly, submit assignment one, a copy of your skills, experience, and brainstorm sheet. Be creative. This could be a photo of a wall of sticky note ideas, a snapshot of your scrap paper or notebook note. You could use a classic electronic document like MS Word or a, or a, a Google Doc. Be sure that these include keywords, skills, and experiences with both your original ideas plus your newly, dis, newly discovered, newly inspired ideas clearly marked from after completing your inspirational exercises through job ads and LinkedIn profiles. Second, be sure to submit a PDF of the three job ads that you discovered that you were excited about and you could see yourself in now or in the future. Do that as a PDF for each one. Third, submit a document including a list of nine LinkedIn profiles that inspired you based on the three job ads you selected previously. Again, this could be an MS Word document, a PDF, Excel, anything that you have handy. Fourth, and finally, submit a PDF of your new and improved LinkedIn profile. Click print and save as PDF in order to create that file. Be sure to scroll all the way down as sometimes it takes a moment for your profile to fully load and it will not print properly. Please be sure to check your PDF before sending to ensure that it is fully visible and has loaded before saving as a printed file. Thank you again for participating. I look forward to seeing your personal brand come to life through the three steps that we've discussed and checking out your four assignments to help you on your journey. Good luck, and I wish you all the best in finding your next steps for a successful career ahead. Remember, don't forget to reach out on LinkedIn, and I look forward to connecting soon.